Okay, so now we're going to be uh, exploring the standard operating procedure for how to build models. Uh, and we're going to cover some initial sections. So first thing, I just want to bring up the page with the, the SOP. And, uh, you know, we're going to simulate as if we were running uh, uh, a real model. So basically the first portion of the SOP, and this can be uh, found in the, our website, uh, it talks about, you know, questions that can potentially be answered through uh, Sysman Dynamics. So I'm going to propose a question here, uh, which, you know, I know we can answer through uh, uh, System Dynamics. But just to put some perspective on this. So basically, you know, what we are trying to do is to measure the growth of mice given the following conditions. Um, there's uh, enough food over time. Oops. Enough food. And then the second thing is that there are uh, space limitations, okay? Which means that uh, over time, uh, the mice are going to get uh, crowded. Now, this situation here would be fairly common in a lab environment, right? Where you can provide food over time without any problems, but you can put the mice in a cage uh, where you know, after some time, when they start reproducing, uh, you know, it would get all crowded. So basically, you have here you know, the little mice. Food is always available, uh, but over time, they start getting crowded. Okay, so that's basically the problem uh, we're trying to solve. Now, would this kind of problem match uh, the requirements for a system dynamics model? In the, the, I guess that's the first question. You know, should you use this? Uh, should you use a system dynamics model? Should you use a system dynamics model? Should you use an agent based model? Uh, should you use a discrete event simulation? Should you use a statistical model? And basically, uh, you know, this protocol, which, you know, is not the, the, the last word in the world about when to use system dynamics, but there are some simple rules here. Um, and it has three things. Number one, uh, you know, you should use system dynamics whenever they are, there are multiple stocks. Now, multiple stocks in this game doesn't really apply, uh, because, you know, you're gonna have stocks. So a stock basically is what in statistics we call, um, a dependent variable or an outcome, uh, no, I don't want that. Um, so it, it doesn't have multiple stocks because the only kind of stock we have in this model are basically the mice. Okay, it's a simple model. We're not taking into account food. Uh, we just know that that's enough. Uh, you know, we have uh, restricted space, but we don't. Later, you will see we don't really have to uh, represent this in this very simple model. Uh, all variables are interconnected. Well, here, you know, I would say that this is true. Uh, so if you have mice, uh, you know, the parents are connected to the children, right? So as you have uh, more uh, parents, uh, you know, they will be able to generate more children. So they are connected. And, uh, you know, the third requirement, which is the presence of uh, feedback loops, is also uh, met. Because basically, um, just do some drawing here. Why does it keep asking me? Uh, basically, you know, if you have mice here and they, and mice starts going up, uh, later they can reproduce and increase the number of mice. Okay? So basically that's the idea. So, based on this protocol, you know, this is actually true. Uh, you know, it meets at least two types of, uh, 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 requirements. The variables are interconnected and there are, uh, feedback loops. 
So then what the next protocol, the next step of the protocol says is that you should have, you know, you should put together a baseline model. Uh, and you should represent your research question in terms of what we call, uh, what's called in here, as an anticipated trend over time for the stocks, uh, also called uh, reference mode. We're fixing this as we go. So, you know, exactly what does that mean? Well, basically it means the following. Let's just say that here you have the number of mice. Oops, sorry. Let's just say that here you have time. And here you have the number of mice. Okay. So basically, you know, what would you hypothesize? Well, if in the beginning, let's say you have two mice, uh, in the beginning you're just going to have, you know, a few, uh, you know, small numbers. So let's say two here. And then, you know, for some time, because, you know, there's a gesta uh, gestational period, uh, you know, the mice are going to be the same. Then it's going to start increasing. Uh, and it's going to start increasing because, you know, the mice start reproducing. But then, after some time, because there are limitations in terms of space, uh, you know, they're going to feel crowded. And, uh, you know, biologists say that, uh, you know, whenever there's uh, crowding, uh, the number of uh, 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 new mice is going to decrease. So if they feel crowded, you know, they don't reproduce anymore. Um, you know, that's just a known fact uh, from biology. So this uh, graphic basically represents what we call a reference mode. So a reference mode is just simply uh, a, a trend over time with, where you are measuring, uh, you know, what you believe the, the, the trend will be over time. Now, this could be a little modified. For example, if say you were able to say that this is the point where you are right now, so you have observed all of this over time, uh, and then you know your belief in terms of the future uh, would be that uh, say after I don't know how many days, thirty days, uh, you know it would grow a little bit more, but then it would reach a plateau, and that plateau would uh, uh, remain over time. Okay. So the reference mode uh, side showing the 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 the, the trend over time, it also has something that, you know, I would probably call a hypothesis in terms of future behavior. And, uh, you know, in uh, 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 this graphic, you could actually create a uh, hypothesis, uh, you know, that would refute your initial hypothesis. But this is my best belief, okay? So this is what I believe in. But maybe, you know, if I try to uh, say no, this might not be true. Uh, you could say something like, let me take a different topic. Well, maybe it's not going to be the same. It's uh, actually going to be this way. Or maybe even, we'll do a better one. It's going to go down. Okay. Uh, so this would be, you know, your alternative. Uh, belief. Belief. Okay. So basically, this is your uh, hypothesis over time, uh, which in, in uh, system dynamics uh, is usually known as the reference mode. Okay. So it has to have a specified time horizon, and we have it. So it's time, and we're measuring this in days. Right. So we have a specific time unit. Now the next step is to select the variables, uh, especially if they can be measured, uh, causally determining the trends. So if you start thinking about uh, this specific model, go back here, the main variables in this case are primarily two things, which is the number of mice which are going to represent the, the, you know, the total number of mice, 
But then there's another thing that we didn't even represent in this case, which is the relationship between mice reproduction and space. Okay, so basically this would say something like uh, the more mice you have in a restricted amount of space, you know, the less they are going to uh, reproduce. Uh, so basically these would be the, the variables. Now, in our next session, uh, I'm going to continue talking about the 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 you know how to uh use this uh SOP further